Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Thule Elk Town Hall. We're really thrilled to have you. This is being hosted by In Defense of Animals, and my name is Lisa Levinson. I'm the campaigns director for In Defense of Animals, and I am thrilled to introduce you to our Thule Elk campaigner, Jack Gescheit. Hi, Jack. Hi, and as, as I've said since third grade, don't say that at an airport. Um, are you going to let people in? Is Janine Richards trying to enter? Should, if I see that, should I click on them, or do you want to handle that, Lisa? We're good. We're going to help you out. Thank okay, you, good. Jack. I'll go back to all you kind people. Thanks, everyone, for showing up for this virtual town hall. It's just like a town hall, but we're not in the same room. Welcome to the modern world. So I wish you all could be here, but I appreciate the fact that, of course, we can have more people now from gosh, around the country, part of me wants to actually see if anybody's beyond the state of California interested in this issue and to type it into the chat. And then Lisa, perhaps, or Fuera, who's also here with IDA, would be kind enough to let us know. But that's me trying to reach out to you kind folks, because really, this whole issue, which is actually one of those rare winning issues, <laughs> which is so rare in, in all these battles, fights, uh, negotiations, folks, whether it's for animal rights or environmental issues, and of course the intersection of those two when it comes to wild animals, since we need wild animals to have a healthy environment and a healthy environment has healthy wild animals. Um, so thanks for coming again. I also would typically, if this was a live room, want to see a show of hands of people who are here for the first Tule Elk virtual town hall. And there's no way to actually practically do that. So raise your hand for yourself. Um, but thank you again for caring enough about these magnificent animals, as Angel was just saying in the pre-intro to the intro of the intro. Um, these are wild animals in a fenced compound inside a national park unit. And the reason they are there, fenced that is, is because of private cattle operations inside again, a national seashore, which is a national park unit. And as we all know, just to set us up here, for the next few minutes. It's a national park where wild animals and protected wild lands are supposed to reign supreme and be the priority. And the only reason the ranches are still there is because they have economic and political clout. And that's been going on for decades. And then of course they have a good public relations campaign that says they're small, local, organic, sustainable, regenerative, add your PR buzzword. And none of that is true. And I, I'm told I have to watch my language, so I'll be polite and just say it's not true, as opposed to they are full of cow manure about all those claims. So the big news, as you all know, is that on June 9th, there was a release from the Park Service saying that they were suddenly, not that they couched it this way, but the reality was for the first time in the 45 years since the fence was erected when the elk were brought in in 1978 into Point Reyes Seashore, they have singularly proposed, not as a range of options, and we don't know which ones, and you guys pick it, but out of just three options, they are recommending the proposed alternative, as is considered in NEPA language, is to remove the fence, which would free the elk inside the Thule Elk Reserve, which is the largest of three herds, but the only completely fenced herd at Point Reyes Seashore to the larger park. So we are all for that. Obviously, it's a it's a no brainer and it's an all hearter. And what I want to do um, for today's format, I don't need to go on as long as I did last time and do a whole presentation. I don't know how many people have seen that. I assume most of you know the issues or you wouldn't be here. And again, I thank you for that. It's why this is now a winning issue. One of those rare wins in these movements where the Park Service has done a I think the professional legal term is a 180 degree back turn. And instead of saying, no, the elk must stay fenced to protect the historic ranchers, which is BS, um, they're now saying we suggest removing the fence and freeing the elk. And we just want to, for the first time as activists, say, good job, Park Service. This is great news. And we want all of you in the community of carers and activists, perhaps yourselves, to inform the public, share the news of this specific opportunity right now, which closes on Monday, to add your voice to the public comment period the Park Service is asking for and say, yes, good job, Park Rangers, excellent. And and you know what? Without my sarcasm, I'm so used to doing that because they have been the um, adversary in this game. 
now the Park Service is suggesting something we want. So good job, Park Service. Without the sarcasm, Jack. Thank you. Alternative B, B for better. And yes, dismantle, remove, take down the felt, the elk reserve fence and free the elk. And then while you're there, also say, yes, we also want cattle ranching out and we want all culling, which is to say killing, which is to say shooting of Thule elk to cease and desist immediately and tell the public that, announce that officially. So you're accountable for that policy. If you do nothing but that, that's fantastic. And I'm gonna share my screen to make it really simple for folks. And then you're welcome to stay and I'm happy to answer questions for a long time because I care so much about this issue. But you can take care of um, helping this movement, push it along the next step in just a few minutes. Can everyone see my screen now? Is anybody there at all? Yes, we can see you. Thank you, I just needed one voice. <laughs> uh, is everybody muted? Is that what's going on here, Fleur? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, you've, you've, gosh, the people have been silenced. There's something so undemocratic about that, but I suppose that's another disadvantage of a virtual town hall. So help save the point raised Tule elk. And there's a picture of the fence. And it's very simple for those of you who haven't already. And if you have, um, I ask you each of you to share with two or three other people and more and you get extra bonus points. Go to the simplest URL, which ultimately will lead to the Point Reyes National Seashore Survey itself is idausa.org slash elk. And thanks to Fleur here on the call, it's, it's now redirecting to uh, a page which is, uh, I've just taken a screenshot snapshot of it. That's their support historic opportunity to remove deadly elk fence. And there's a letter there which gives you more information. You fill out your, basically your name, address, and your email. And if you do nothing more than just a, um, here in the center of the screen, now know the basics, agree with the proposal, which is alternative B in this case, to remove the elk fence, end all elk killing, what they call culling. I prefer to call it killing because it's more accurate and not a euphemism to avoid the reality, the brutality of culling elk inside a national park for cattle ranches. And then C, not that they're asking for it, but it's perfectly appropriate to say, in addition, remove all cattle ranches from the park. And, and kind of the backstory here is, the Park Service doesn't consider this a vote. They want to know, as one of our uh, brilliant activists put it, tell us something we don't know inform the Park Service about what you, the public, would like. Now, they're gonna interpret the data the way they do, but it's an opportunity for us activists, especially one guy named Ken, who's amazing and is a professional statistician. He'll get hold of the thousands of pages of PDF documents that the Park Service eventually releases in the spring, showing all of your comments. The public's, well, more than 10,000 comments, we expect at this point, and we will mine the data there for the essential data for the movement, which is, for instance, 97 or 98% of respondents, people who told the Park Service something they don't know, reaffirmed the public sentiment, which has been always, which is, we want the fence down, the elk free, and the cattle out. So that's the quick, oh, we're already 20 minutes in. I was hoping to do that in five minutes. What was I thinking? But th that is, that's the goal here. And I can go into more bullet points and how to embellish it for those people who wanna do that. As with all of these surveys and other petitions, this is not a petition. You can use your own words, you can rephrase things. How exactly they're going to mine that data is kind of tricky. And we activists have had hours of discussions about that very topic, because you know we get into the weeds as we have to, but agree with the proposal alternative B, end all call calling, remove all cattle ranches, and please share this link which is now, I think it's maybe one of the other IDAers can check, but I think it's over 9,400 people have filled out this form. And I know also another great organization working on this, the Center for Biological Diversity, who's involved with one of the lawsuits, with one of the two lawsuits against the Park Service for their mismanagement of the park, uh, has over, I was told, 8,000 comments as well. So I'm confident we're gonna hit 20,000 comments total, which is fantastic, it really is great. I mean, I have a, a pet desire to go to 40,000 and break a world record, but uh, 20,000 comments is fantastic. 
and it will clearly, because the public clearly wants this to happen, uh, we'll tell the Park Service in no uncertain terms, yes, we support you for a change. We're not yelling at you. We're no longer calling you out for being a problem. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Your mission to protect wild animals and these, these beautiful creatures, these beautiful creatures in the park. As you all know, that's why you're here. Uh, again, I just, I so wish I was in the room with all of you folks just to, <laughs> it's going to say like Donald Trump, but I didn't say that, to feel your energy and your love for these creatures and find so many people who are also devoted to these causes. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about these challenging issues. You actually do find your tribe, your people who care so much for the animals and for wild places, which are, you know, diminishing all too rapidly, as we all know. So that's that's the short story. Uh, I want to stop the share so you can see me back. Okay, so am I full screen again now? Yes. Yes, says the one voice in the audience who has not been silenced. <laughs> so um, I can go on, but I just want to stop there and uh, people can please, I mean, I don't know how you want to run this, uh, Lisa and Flair, to let people speak or whether it's just easier with whatever there are, 100 people now, or however many, to have them chat. What, what do you folks recommend? Yeah, um, I would say yeah. um, that if you can't if you can't speak now, and maybe Lisa, you want to talk yeah, about I the speakers, can. but if you if you um, if you can only write in the chat, then please write in the chat your question, and I will put them to Jack, and then Lisa, um, I'll hand over to you for. Thank you. So everyone can chat if you like. You have the power to unmute and mute yourself. So I appreciate you muting earlier while we were getting started. Thank you so much. And if you have background noise, you may want to do that unless you are speaking. And then there's a, a raise hands feature that you can use um, if you'd like to um, say your, your question with us out loud and have us be able to see, connect the person with the face. You can also type your questions into the chat box if you're um, camera shy or prefer to have your question answered there, there in the chat. So it looks like we have a person who'd like to ask your question live. So Max, would you be interested in sharing? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Hi, Max. Hi. Hi, Jack. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is rather obvious, but one of my concerns about this, I'm really happy they are planning to take the fence down. Um, but of course, that's going to open them up to culling, and they have not said that they're not going to cull, right? So, you know, I guess just it's one step at a time. Uh, yes, you're, you're very intelligent and perceptive and caring. <laughs> and, no, no, it's exactly right. So that's why we're sort of beating them to the punch, anticipating this would be a problem. In fact, as I said in the first town hall, and now I'm even more clear on that, taking down the fence is absolutely great, and it's an essential first step. It will lead to another host of issues, which is more potential culling from the Park Service, because now it's like the two free-ranging, so-called free-ranging herds. I don't consider any of the herds free-ranging, because they're still encroaching on cattle space, and whenever they're near cattle, there's going to be a problem. The ranchers complaining about the elk getting on their land, which is the public's land. Um, also, more exposure to Jonas disease from cattle manure. Um, and there's a third thing, which I'm forgetting right now. But but in any case, that's why you can take this opportunity in your comment. Yes, alternative B. And by the way, Park Service, now that I have your attention, please announce that you're going to stop all culling. And you have to because the herds are intermingling. And it's again, I I, I try to couch my answers to people who just have a few minutes of bandwidth and time in their busy lives and they're here to do this, for which we are grateful. You can keep it short and sweet. If you are more invested in this campaign or have more time, or ideally both, uh, join us, um, write a longer comment. That's fantastic. They will actually take a note of everybody's comments, oddly enough, and we will be going in there, the activists, and mining that data to use to the media to, again, we hope not like, oh, this is over, everyone go home and relax. No, this is a winning campaign. Join us now and let's keep pushing this thing because it's, it's everything. It, it's a microcosm for, for problems in this country with wild lands and wild animals. It's not just about elk at Point Reyes, although those are certainly worthy causes. But this is an opportunity for, I assume there's a lot of activists on this call and fellow vegans probably who have made the connections between what we eat and raising cattle, which is a brutal industry, which is one of the main climate drivers. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm speechifying. Do you have more, Max? I'm sorry. No, that's that's my main question. Is there um, 
are we still bringing up the we're not bringing up the issue of the water pollution yeah, you can certainly do that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you can make any comment you want and everything you have to say that's, you know, critical of the present situation is great to put in there. Yes, cattle ranches pollute. And I want you to know that I know that. <laughs> yes, I do. Too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. If okay. they get 10,000 people saying, hey, don't those ranches pollute, I want them out. That's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brave first woman. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. <laughs> I think Susan Stover's hand is up, or Fleur or Lisa, do you want to run this? I'm just seeing them lined up here. Go ahead, John. This is Susan. I'll talk. Hi. Hi. I've been to many of the point raised. Uh, hi, Jack. Many of the live things that we did before the pandemic, and I've been involved as much as I can. To One question, one comment. Can we sign multiple petitions? I know they all go to the National Park Service, but can I sign in defense of animals and... The Center for Biological Control, or, or is that, uh, excuse me, bio, Biological Diversity, or is that, uh, is that not possible? That's a great question, actually. We were talking about this today with Lisa, and in fact, that might be a wrinkle we haven't even considered. So th this form on In Defense of Animals website actually links, links directly to the Park Service, and people yes. are only, we don't want people jumping in and doing two or three or four signatures as much right. as we appreciate <laughs> the sentiment. It doesn't work that way. It actually kind of devalues what we're doing. They'll see all yeah. these kind of multiples. Um, and I it's think actually, I want if somebody might know the answer to this, the Center for Biological Diversity, I think is also doing a form that links to the back end. So it okay. would be one or the other in that case. Okay, I, I, I think that's true. I, 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 I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to comment on is I'm sure you've all seen this, but you know, this last week's Bohemian in Sonoma County, which I think also hits Marin, you know, there's a Freedom of Information Act by Peter Byrne, the journalist about exactly this topic. So it's getting, uh, there's a, I think they're presenting a lawsuit if I read it correctly. So I just wanted to point that out. Moving yes. forward in a good way. Yeah, no, that's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's, you know, democracy dies in darkness. Uh, sunlight is the best antiseptic. And then my favorite one, I my new favorite one, I just heard on a TV show from four years ago, was this uh, quote by St. Augustine. Um, the truth is like, have anyone heard this one? The truth is like a lion. You don't need to defend it. Let it loose and it will defend itself. Good. Good. So if we can get FOIA documents, through FOIA, get documents about basically the corruption of the ranches polluting the place and hiding it or lying about it and the Park Service not doing their diligence by revealing it, and outing them for that, it will bring their 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 dirty house of cards tumbling down. Yeah, it's just the, the truth. The, the truth here. Good. Thank you. Thank I'll you. Stay on, I'll stay on the meeting. Thank you so much, uh, Gail Bell. Thank you, Gail. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Um, I live in Colorado and yeah, and we are going through a very similar thing here because we are reintroducing wolves by the end of December. And our problems have very much been caused by the ranchers who we feel have been and have a sense of entitlement for centuries in this country and um, who are very much responsible for degraded lands, um, all of our public lands. And those public lands belong to each one of us. Um, how do we bring this issue, not just specifically for the, the elk or the wolves, but for all wildlife here, this has to change. And we know that the Cattlemen's Association, the ranchers have huge amounts of money and advocacy, um, but I think it's a nationwide problem that needs to be changed. How do we go about that nationally together? I have Thank three you. words for you. <laughs> what <laughs> you said, woman, that's four words. No, that's fantastic. I totally agree with everything you said. And one of the ways we do that is by, well, just what you just did. You just connected this movement for elk in California to
to your uh, working on wolf reintroduction in Colorado, and then everybody on both sides hearing that and realize, I mean, you just feel the energy of it. We're not alone in this. It, it's cattle industry, which is, a you know, it's, it's the most insane thing. It's abusing domesticated animals, destroying the land and killing all the wild animals. Oh, and by the way, heating the climate. I mean, it's just more people need to hear it. So the more of us that say it here, everywhere, social media and on and on. Uh, and you know, this one, this book, I brought it out last time I realized, um, hang on, Jack, you're abandoning your people, come back. Ah. I mean, you don't necessarily need this, but this is where I kind of learned about this stuff. Let's see if I can get it. This Land, How Cowboys, Capitalism, and Corruption Are Ruining the American West by Christopher Ketchum. So th this basically details, you know, out, out through the West and gets into all the politics of it and the government and the cattle industry. And it's, you don't necessarily need to know all of it, but if anybody wants to, it's a great book about this exact issue. So to answer your question, um, using the internet, I mean, my God, there's enough bad things about the internet, but it can connect people and issues and realize this is all about the cattle industry and people need to challenge the, the myths, I guess, that the cattle industry has been, that we were all raised with, right? Eating meat and the American cowboy, you know, smoking cigarettes out there on his horse dying of cancer, you know, and then the rest of it, oh, by the way, also degrading the land. Sorry, John Wayne, you know, you're, it's different now. There's too many Americans and too many cattle. It's not, you know, the, the fantasy myth they push, right? Which is just a few cattle in the backyard, regenerative, you just move them around and all the problems are solved, like clean coal, nonsense, or bull um, manure. Does it, uh, Lisa or Fleur, do you have anything to add, please? No, thank you. That I very much appreciate that because we are facing the same thing here in Colorado. Thank you. Yeah. Do you, are you able to share that out on social media and such and just let people know? I mean, it's a good way to share it nationally. Oh, I mean, we have been trying to educate people now for eight years that we worked on this project to get the wolves some justice after all of them were killed in the 1940s. Are, are you connected to any organizations? I, I don't know them all, but yes. uh, you are. Okay. Well, I was just going to say that I'm, I'm sure IDA has people. Yeah, probably so. all of them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, so, some it's, it's connecting with community like this in every way possible, sharing on social media, getting media stories as you can. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of work, but I can't think of anything, any work that's more fulfilling and builds community as well. And also, yeah. Gail, your, your work is well known. Um, the getting the wolves back in um, Colorado is a very popular topic, and even one of our campaigners, um, Ginger Fadak, went to some of your meetings. So we really appreciate all that you're doing for the wolves. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa, for informing me about who the amazing Gail Bell is and uh, sharing with the rest of us as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You invited me to speak a little bit um, to add to that. I would just say thank you so much for everyone who is writing in the comments. Um, we have many, many people, um, Scott, Derek, um, Lucia, and I know there was other people earlier were making that very, um, you know, very important point that we are all interconnected. We live um, on one planet and um, we are seeing this problem everywhere. It's not just, um, it's not just wolves, it's also wild horses. Basically, anywhere we have animal agriculture, we are seeing our wild animals being hurt as a result, um, predators being killed, um, uh, grazing animals, herbivores being, you know, pushed out of their native lands. Um, and we can make a difference. Um, every single every single time we decide to eat, we can make plant based choices which don't hurt the animals, which help the animals and they respect wild animals. Um, and uh, we have a, a handy vegan starter kit, which I would uh, encourage everyone to um, to order. We have it on our site, so I will, I will drop the link in the chat. And Fleur, just to let you know, uh, when we're doing the typing into the Zoom, um, we'll need to use the full link. Thank you. And by the way, I just, I just want to call out, this is so exciting. I mean, I've been paying attention to the screen for some reason, rather than trying to read the chat over here, as you, you, you young people can do in your little 30s and 40s and do two things at once. But Donna in Maryland, Gloria from New Jersey, David from Pennsylvania, 
Sally from New Mexico, Cynthia from Tucson, one in Arizona, Cheryl in Michigan. Oh my God. <laughs> Claudine is in Switzerland where it's 1 a.m. Thank you, Claudine, from across the world. That's amazing. Ken in Maryland, uh, Long Beach, California. I know where that is. And uh, uh, Kate or Kate in Philadelphia. This is incredible. <laughs> Terry in Citrus Ice. Gail in Colorado, we heard from. David in Rhode Island. <laughs> wow, I feel like I'm on a game show and we're all winners. And the elk ultimately are the winners too. This is really wonderful, guys. <laughs> Sherry in Pennsylvania, I could go on. Just outrageous. Leslie is in the state of just outrageous. <laughs> um, and I just want to go back. Uh, if you're just joining us for some reason, I feel like an infomercial for Al Gore. You know, call 1-800-AL-GORE for president. Wait, I'm dating myself. Um, if you just go to IDAUSA.org slash elk, that's, that's once again, <laughs> IDAUSA.org slash elk, that will take you to the... Uh, Page IDA has wonderfully set up for this, and you can fill out the form with your name, address, and email. Tell them alternative B is what you support. It's their proposal. B for better out of A, B, and C. You want elk killing or culling to end and to remove cattle ranches as well. So in 30 seconds there, if you do nothing but that, you're a superstar <laughs> in rent-a-car, I mean, for Tulio. Totally so thank you. Back to our regularly scheduled program with Jack, I guess. <laughs> Uh, do we have any more questions? Yes, I have a question. Please. Is that uh, hi, Yes, me. I have mm -hmm. a question for you, Jack. Um, I believe that the the, uh, the wildlife animals is the cows because the cows should not should should not eat beef because it is in danger for these cows because it is bad for eating beef because we don't eat beef at all because I'm a plant-based woman because vegans should eat eat veggie burgers like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I mean, it's funny. I, I came to this, I guess, animal rights community late in the game. I came in from the environmental point of view, not knowing that cattle were such a destructive force. And then once I was willing to look at how horrible it is, then I was, how shall we say, aghast and realized how brutal it is on the animals. There's just no way to do it without torturing animals, especially for millions of Americans. It's just, it's not like the, the fantasy ad of Ben and Jerry cow, cows happily skipping along green hillsides. And then we just take some of the milk and leave the calf with the mom. Well, you, you guys know, it's it's a horror show. It's so horrible, you have to run away from it. But yeah, it's, it's not especially healthy. You certainly don't need it. And it's healthier for planet <laughs> and then for the atmosphere and survival on this planet, for us to have a plant-based diet. Yes. Thank you. You're an angel. angel. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, you know, the other thing I'd do, if I was in a room full of live people, I'd say I can go into more detail. I have more documents to show, but I, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't need to go on and, and on, although I could. I and, have one. Uh, I do have oh. one question, actually, a little earlier from uh, Nancy Hare asked, why is NPS only now deciding to remove the fence? Great question. Uh, <laughs> you can only imagine the number of hours I've been on Zoom calls along with all the other activists in this large community. It's not just it's not just me. It's not just us. A lot more people working tirelessly behind the scenes for years asking the question as of June 9th, the press release that came out of nowhere, out of the blue. We are proposing taking the fence down, which is a reversal, a bat turn, as I call it. Why? So to cut to the chase, the best conjecture we have about that, and I'm sworn to secrecy, as are all of you, don't tell anybody. Two things. Diane Feinstein is no longer at the height of her powers in the Senate, and she was always a friend of Big Ag and was always one of the linchpins of this, allowing the policy to change at the highest levels in Washington from the Senate, Dianne Feinstein, it comes down to, and others, but it comes down then to the Department of Interior, to the National Park Service, to Point Reyes Seashore. And then of course, rancher pressure is still there. They might still litigate and try to slow this thing down, but Dianne Feinstein is no longer a champion. Uh, and the other issue, we believe this, this is directed that came from the White House, just sick and tired of the, um, 
terrible publicity this issue has gotten, uh, the killing of elk, the dying of elk uh, at Point Reyes Seashore in a national park. Um, and just like the, the wolves in Colorado, if you let people know that wolves are being shot and the populations are being decimated and treated brutally, that's how you can also move that issue forward as well. So it's getting out to the public. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, third, third item, very important, lawsuits. There are still two active lawsuits pressing on, one focused on the mismanagement of elk in the Tomales Point Reserve, which is the reserve now in question with the fence coming down. And then separate from that, three other environmental organizations suing the Park Service for ranch pollution in a nutshell. It's more detailed than that, but there are negotiations now. And we, we suspect that that also is a pressure on the Park Service they're just sick and tired of. So the White House got involved and said, okay, we gotta, we gotta make some movement on this. Now, they haven't said, we wanna take the ranches out yet. That's too big a political move. So that's our opportunity, in my humble opinion, um, to bring the community in and say, wow, come on, let's really push in this now and bring more people into a winning campaign. And ultimately, as elk are freed, they will come into more conflict with ranches because they're two diametrically opposed uses for land. One is wild animals who are evolved to be on the land, who actually heal the land, and then the, the abuse of, a, of the cattle industry, not just on the animals, which is severe, but too many large animals, bovines from England, not adapted to be in harmony with the land here and the way they are in the West, and destroying the land and polluting the land. You just can't have them side by side or intermingling without their coming into conflict of the land itself. They're, they're both herbivores, they're not gonna fight with each other, but one of them is polluting the land, the other is actually trying to heal the land, which is a wild un undulate that moves around the park in smaller numbers and smaller weight. And then you know we're gonna get into, will the population grow and what about predators? And we, we can have those conversations, but as Max said earlier, one step at a time, and this is a big, significant first step, Part of a winning campaign, I, as self-appointed one of many cheerleaders, say this is a big deal and it's a reason to celebrate and set an example for Max in Colorado that, yeah, you can even win the wolf battles. It doesn't feel like that much of the time, but you know, this was done here with a, with a relatively small group of, I don't know, a few hundred people and maybe a handful of 20, 30 people more active. Lisa. Oh, thanks, Jack, so much for sharing these important details. And um we have a couple of questions that I thought we would mention in here. And we also have a request to be politically sensitive for people who have different um, uh, you know, alliances and, and groups that they, they connect to. Good suggestion. And so I wanted to say two questions that may be related. One is, um, why don't the ranchers fence the cattle in? And the second one is um, about, well, why don't you address that one first? <laughs> I'm sorry, what's the question, please? The question is um, about why don't the ranchers fence their cattle in? And that might be that um, the same fence to fence the cattle in is also keeping the... So, so, so two parts to that. Um... Let me do the macro first before the micro. The macro is these cattle, specifically at Point Reyes Seashore, different than Colorado. I cannot speak for the Colorado issue with wolves, but at Point Reyes Seashore, it's a national park and private businesses of any kind, especially those that put manure on the land and are polluting the waterways, which has been documented by activists, have no place in the seashore. So the ultimate problem is fences or no fences, Cows, thousands of them. There are thousands of cows and only a few hundred elk. Uh, cows that number elk about nine to one. They poop and pee on the land that washes into the waterways, pollution. So that problem will continue no matter how you lay down fences. So that's the big picture and the big issue we will continue to work on. On the micro level immediately, yes, there is discussion now about taking down the elk fence, which no animal can pass and putting up two wires Technically, it would be about 18 inches off the ground and 36 inches off the ground. Straight wires, wildlife friendly, meaning they're not barbed. And all wild animals can move across those two wires, whether they're little elk, big elk, coyotes, deer, and of course, smaller animals. But those would stop cows from moving north into where the reserve is currently. So it would be 
uh, the smallest point is the top of point receipt shore. The, the elk could migrate down if the current woven wire fence is removed, but then cows could not move forward because the two wires would stop them from going into what is now only elk territory. So there's discussions about that and that is more granular and that these will become issues for sure. Um, and I hope that answers the question. And, and, and oh, I'm sorry, one more element to it also, there is talk about um, putting up on the cattle ranches more fences to stop the cows from moving too far out of the property away from their the cattle ponds. And I don't know the details of that actually. I haven't put my attention on that one yet. We have another question for you. And um, so this one is actually from Renee, who says that um, Renee recalls that the acting head of the National Park Service in California came from another state where cattle grazing was also allowed within the park. Is that correct? Are you, I'm sorry, I was getting the sun off me. Is that, uh, are you talking about the superintendent of Point Reyes Seashore? Yes, that the acting head of the National Park Service came from another state where um, cattle grazing was permitted in the park. I actually, I, I, you know what, this is embarrassing. I should know who the, the head of the entire National Park Service is, and at the moment I'm blanking, and I, I'm, I don't doubt that that may be true. I know about Craig Kenkel, who's the superintendent of... That's, that's the person that's... It's, okay, it's so Craig Kenkel, in California. I, he came from um, Ohio. I think it's Cuyahoga National Park. And they, oh, I know that he was overseeing the culling of deer at Cuyahoga National Park, which was not something that cheered our hearts <laughs> or warmed our hearts when he came to Point Reyes, where they were, you know, dealing with the elk problem, which is really a cattle problem. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll be politically correct here and say that, you know, wherever an appointee comes from, I don't judge them as a person, I judge their actions and their policies. And of course, even above, beyond that, I think that the superintendent of Point Ray Seashore ultimately is taking directions from Washington. So the policy comes out of Washington, which is the National Park Service head, which is a division of the Department of Interior. And uh, Deb Hallen, you know, who's this amazing Native American woman, most American uh, head of the, park, of the um, Department of Interior ever, Secretary of the Interior ever, hasn't been able to speak out on this issue because I assume, I don't know, it's a political appointment and she can't buck policy out of the White House. But that policy has now shown it can change. So I don't get too caught up in the lower rungs and we're shooting right for the top, which is, you know, Biden administration policy, who seems apparently, based on this, open to changing a federal policy after 45 years of it being one way at Point Reyes. So also to add to that, Jocelyn, who you may know, uh, Jack, Great. is saying that Craig Kinkle um, of Point Reyes came from the location you mentioned in Ohio. Uh, they do allow ranching and they moved him directly from there to here. So probably to be able to handle this in our area. Yes, that would make sense. Thank you, Jocelyn. Hi, thanks for coming. I mean, there, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of many activists here and I've tried to learn as much as I can, but my brain only holds so much and then it just starts coming out of my mouth without being sorted. <laughs> so I rely on the kindness of strangers who know more than I do. And, and some of them are here, which is wonderful. Uh, Derek's, he, Derek, a guy named Derek is here who's been out in the park putting in hours every Friday, pretty much he goes out there, an amazing young man. I'm just proud to know him and, and helping the cause. And I mean, anybody here who just, Every time I talk about them, I start tearing up. I mean, they're just so magnificent, these beautiful animals. How can anybody harm them, you know? And I assume I'm talking to a virtual room full of fellow animal lovers. I mean, gosh, it's just, they, they so clearly deserve protection in a national park. That's why we have national parks. Someone here from, uh, I just saw Florida is, is here. We have Florida in the house. <laughs> I have um, a comment here from Lucia, um, who says, Deb Halland comes from a cattle family. She has the ability to put wolves back on the ESA and has done nothing. Yeah, you know, welcome to the world of politics now. You know, I don't have an answer to this question, but the one I would ask, it's rhetorical here is, you know, can she unilaterally push something like that? I assume she can't just sit down in her office and write directives and throw them out to the nation as much as we'd like her to. 
or that we assume she would do things we like. Uh, you know, it's, it is heavy politics in Washington and the cattle industry is super powerful, but this is a way to inform, I, I mean, my belief as a grassroots activist is to inform the people. And, um, you know, once the people lead, as the bumper sticker says, then the leaders must follow most of the time. <laughs> yeah. And um, for everyone who has made comments about um, wild horses, wolves, and other wild animals, um, we do run a very active campaign to save uh, various wild animals. So uh, if you're not already signed up, you probably are because you're on this call. But um, if you feel like you might not be getting our emails, every every week we send out um, two urgent action alerts to help animals. Many times it's wild animals. Um, you can get those emails by going to idausa.org slash sign up. I will drop that link in the chat also. And a big thank you to Lisa and her team for all of the fantastic work they do to defend wild animals, including um, the Endangered Species Act, including um, wild horses, including wolves. Yeah, I mean, all the, all these animals, I mean, if anybody here knows about wildlife services, and if you don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> so <laughs> on my Tree Spirit Project site, there's treespiritproject.com slash wildlife services. And they're a, a division of the USDA, Department of Agriculture, and they exist only to provide services to wildlife. And services is killing animals <laughs> and i have to laugh and i'm not laughing because it's funny i'm laughing because it's so horrible i'm either going to cry which is inappropriate for a man of my years on this forum or i'm going to laugh it off because it's just unbelievable and again the average person has no idea this is going on so that's where i've just convinced education 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 uh let's see uh ann in new mexico is here susan in venice california and uh Stephanie in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm just I'm thrilled to see people from around the country. It's really exciting knowing that these issues are interpenetrating and national, uh, assuming we all breathe the same air, which we do. Uh, Max, you have another comment, it looks like, or question. Uh, you're, you're muted. You're muted. Unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know that the Native tribes were uh, work or the, the park service was working with the native tribes or so they say and i'm just wondering what are they saying on that the local tribes how are how are they viewing this right now are they on the side of the tule elk or the cattle ranches so let me do that in two parts um the one officially recognized tribe is Grayton rancheria or figure figr federated indians of Grayton rancheria aka Grayton rancheria Mm -hmm. is aligned with the park service mm -hmm. on this alternative b okay. to remove the fence and free the elk that's the short answer mm -hmm. the longer answer is there are other tribes which are not federally recognized which tend to be not all of them tend to be more progressive and would also speak out uh, perhaps more vociferously about removing cattle uh figure has not done that and it's in my opinion uh wading into the morass of politics very gingerly the larger the organization, generally, the more careful you are with your language and you're, as Craig Kenkel recently said on their own presentation, the Park Service about this, they are, um, figure, Federated Indian Grand Retria, have a seat at the table and they are partners in negotiating on all these issues. We did ask to what extent, what exactly does that mean? And we, I didn't get a more specific answer because I'm in the swamp of politics. Mm -hmm. So I won't go the I love being in the swamp with hip boots, but I will behave myself and not go out there right now. Okay. But so they're mainly, they're, they approve of this plan B, but not nothing beyond, they're, they're not against the culling of the Thule elk particularly? Uh, someone else in this call might know, I don't want to give misinformation. I'm very careful as I'm able. So I don't know where they stood on that. I know they also were, the Park Service said, I, they don't speak directly, but this Park Service says that they are in conversation with Grayton and they did supposedly share the cost of installing the water tanks mm. in, in this in the in the reserve during the drought two years ago what they didn't mention when they talk about this is why did they install water tanks well at a modicum of caution well I would add you're leaving out a little detail which is because we activists made a huge amount of noise we did we and did the defense of animals was very deeply involved in that and you yeah. know financing the tanks and water and hundreds of citizens came out and it was because of that 
that then the Park Service decided to have a modicum of caution and install tanks. So it's another example here. I mean, you can either get pissed at the Park Service about that, or I choose to see it more optimistically, which is the people can actually move federal policy. A, a senator with a six-year term <laughs> can't often move policy. Right. So I really can, I frame it as a win and a potentially much larger win, which of course we must win. And they are going to take the water tanks down if they take removal. So their current recommendation, now we're going back out into the proverbial weeds, the current recommendation with this proposal is they want to return it to a wilderness area, which much of the northern portion of the Tomales Point is. The Philip Burton Wilderness is called at Point Reyes, if anyone know, wants to know the name. And sure, wilderness areas shouldn't have big installed water tanks and troughs. We activists and the community will certainly, and this can go as a granular comment on the comment form, but it's, it's well, the people are here now 50 minutes into this, maybe they do care enough to write more, but we want them to leave the um, artificial supplemental water in the reserve for at least two more autumns, two more years. Mm -hmm. If they took the fence down tomorrow, we want it in there two more years. Since the fence would probably come down, the earliest it would be would be a year from now, next fall, if this goes ahead according to plan, if the ranchers don't sue and slow it up with litigation, even when those come down, it's like, no, no, refill the water tanks now and refill them next fall also, because it's going to take time for the elk in the northern herds at the tip. I keep going like this. I'm picturing in my mind some of this <laughs> point the northern herds are drier. And those animals, I like to think the elk are going to play Thule elk telephone. <laughs> where if <laughs> how's this for an elaborate map, Lisa? My triangle is the point. So the southern herds are here at the fence line, which is the end of my screen, and they're gonna, oh wow, we can go wander. So they will. And then there are actually four subherds roughly spread out through this reserve going north, like eight or nine miles. Uh -huh. And the northernmost ones are gonna be the last ones to get to get the Tule Elk telephone game played and know, like, oh, we can drift south too and get to where there's more water. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, because you've created this horrible situation on drought stricken land where these herds are adapted to being in those drought stricken spots, yeah. give them time, keep it artificially watered because of the problem that was created in the first place for two more years. And we are gonna have to push on that issue because alternative B, to repeat myself, doesn't currently have provisions for that. It says remove the water tanks and make it natural again and a wilderness, which is fine, but not so fast. We should add that to our comments then. Yes, and, and you are obviously equipped to do it because you're intelligent and caring. And I hope everybody on this call is. You probably are if you're still here listening to me go on. And um, we have, uh, I know we're coming to the end of our of our time here. We do have two questions, two very interesting questions. Um, the first one is from Christina. How can we push to eliminate all of these horrible agencies that are destroying our wildlife? And then the second one um, is uh, from Marilyn Jasper. If all goes well. Um, great, but the next hurdle will be elk overpopulation. Um, can elk be treated with contraceptives? In North California counties, reportedly, their populations have grown a lot and they've become pests in residential areas. And you know that knee jerk reaction is that some want, you know what the knee jerk reaction is that some want. So, how do we make sure that that overpopulation doesn't happen in point rays? There are two interesting questions there. I don't know if we have um, time to go over them. <laughs> The second one I can do briefly, it's a, you know, those are giant questions and we could have an hour discussion of those three items. But in short, what I tell people like, what about, I mean, Congressman Huffman has even said, you know, if we remove the cattle operations and free the elk, they're going to overpopulate. There's no wolves, there's no bears, there's no predators, there's no grizzlies. But bring the, well, bring the wolves in. And <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so I actually had this discussion two days ago with somebody about wolves and I was reminded wolves are pack animals. They range a huge area. Marin County would be hard pressed to accept even by a vote of the public, let alone the politicians to bring wolves in as much as I love wolves and would love to have them around here. And I'm not, but I'm, I'm a freak. I want to hug wolves. That's how crazy I am, right? You know, the animal hugger, but it point raised for the elk. The issue of overpopulation, once the cattle operations are out, freeing up another 28,000 acres of parkland, which is cattle right now, ranch land, plenty of room for years, three, four, five years easy, maybe more, for the elk population to expand as it will, we hope, even though you know we're in, a, we're in drought now and there's wildfire smoke in the air here as I sit and talk to you. So it's not like they're gonna explode in a population, it's gonna be a problem the way some people um, intimate it is, not at all. Plenty of time to figure that out. The population has been artificially suppressed and if it's, maybe there's 500 elk in there right now, about, and if it goes to 1,000 or 1,500, but they have the entire park to span into, not a problem. 
And then there's discussion, can you remove elk that don't have Jonas disease and move them to other areas? And yes, but that's a whole issue, but it's possible. Someone else was talking about uh, black bears and educating me about black bear behavior, that they're not uh, aggressive the way grizzlies can be. Um, there are already black, a couple black bears around that have been seen in Santa and Selma up in a tree and they don't attack humans and they actually predate is a nice word to say they eat young elk who can't run away from them yet, which is you know the, the brutal way wild, wildlife works, but that's a healthy way to manage a population as opposed to shooting you know the big ones, which is what colors do and hunters do. No hunting in the park. I'm totally against culling shooting by gun. There are other options and we don't have to deal with it yet. So that's only one of the three questions that was posed. You said, what do we do about these agencies? Like, yes. I, I can't even begin to address that, honestly. Not, not in the remaining uh, one minute over, we already are. It's, well, I would say in the, the very easy answer is um, please continue to do the fantastic work that you have done um, by signing our alerts. So uh, the one that you have signed today, idausa.org slash elk, um, your comments are going directly to the decision makers um, who make a difference. And that's what we do every single week. Um, every time you get e-news on Friday and also on Sunday, um, your comments are going directly to the decision makers and will impact the lives of animals. So that's um, one thing that you can do very quickly and easily. And we really appreciate all of your help to do that. And one other thing you can do, I'm a consultant for um, in defense of animals. I don't work for them full time, but they're an amazing organization that support me in this work and, and every other animal campaign you can think of. So make a donation to in defense of animals, either now or at the end of the year or both as you can, as you're able, if you're able, and it helps fund all of these campaigns to work for the animals everywhere. One last question. The deadline is Monday to have Correct. this. Okay. And, and end of day, Monday, 11 PM Pacific time, if you must know. Okay, great. So yeah, time to share. Uh, it's only Wednesday. We've got another few days and the weekend as well to, you know, get over 20,000 comments, which would be fantastic. The more, the more, the better. Thank you, Max. Thank you. And, and again, thanks everyone for showing up and caring about the animals. And yeah. I just, I wish we could all be out there in, in, in the woods with the animals together and, and share the beauty of that place. And although I guess from uh, all over this nation, we have people signing in now because you love animals, even if you're out of state. And I thank you for caring as well for, the, for these animals and for the ones near you. Uh, I, I, I love them so much, I can't put it into words. Thank you, Jack, thank you. for you. leading us today in this um, town hall and giving us some, some guideposts of what to do next, especially to sign that alert. I think that is the best and quickest way that we can help right now. And hopefully everybody was able to do that during the town hall today. If you did, since some of us are able to view, you can check it out in the gallery section and um, just um, you can raise your hand if you did sign the, the actual uh, alert today, or if you signed it at some point, you can raise your hand or put the, the little uh, emoji up there to, to let us all know that, that that's you know one and done. And so that, that gives us, gets us one step closer one step closer uh gosh i had something else to say what was it i'm just i'm looking at the screen finally of all the wonderful people here which is so i i miss i don't know maybe i'm just a freak but I actually miss human beings is that is that wrong of me no <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just it was it used to be different when i was a kid before the pandemic people used to get together in the same room you remember that kids <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Oh, my God. Nancy Reeser is here. I know you from other activists. Wow. Um, it was one other question. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Or you have anything else to say? I'll try to remember what it was. I was I wanted to ask people or tell people, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm crumbling under pressure. Self-imposed, of course. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you so much. It's so appreciated. It's my pleasure, and I'm just one person who has a voice and hopefully ignite the uh, fire of love for the natural world and animals and all of Mother Nature and this beautiful planet and other people. Um, you can just send ripples out into the pond, or what's that wonderful <laughs> that, we all, that we all rely on from um, Margaret Mead? Uh, never doubt that a small committed group of individuals can mm. change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. 
We, we all have that power to ignite others around us. And it, it feels, I mean, as much as it can feel futile and depressing and, you know, despair, if you take it, listen to me, <laughs> I'm going to my, my, little, my little soapbox again, you can't take it away from me. Um, in doing so, it just, it, it makes me feel better. It makes me personally feel better every day, like I'm making an effort. And I don't even have children, so I, I have more time than many of you to work on these campaigns, you know, for the, uh, the, the children of God out there <laughs> called the wild animals and the bees and the fleas and the crickets and and the tuli elk and the wolves and all the rest of it. You name it, I want to hug it. Uh, my, my, <laughs> my girlfriends have said, Jack, careful, you know, the animals are going to sense what you want from them and run away in terror. <laughs> you want to hug them. <laughs> yeah. Too much Thank information, you. Lisa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jack, for bringing your incredible energy to this campaign and also for hosting this second town hall today. You know, we had one before, it was really successful. So we thought we'd do another one just to have that, that communication with all of you to let you know what's going on and, and to take that action step, which is so needed right now because the comments are um, being collected on the 25th of September. And I remember what I wanted to say. Thank you for giving me a spell there. Uh, it's what's next? What's gonna happen next? What's the next benchmark? What's the next big thing that's gonna happen? This. When this closes on Monday, that's the end of this comment period, and that will be collated by the Park Service and released in the spring, whatever that might mean. But between now and then, we're expecting resolution or news, at least, from two different lawsuits, the Harvard lawsuit about Tamales Point and the mismanagement of the Elk, the one I'm actually a plaintiff in. Uh, that's going to end up in a appellate court in the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco this fall, you know, unless the schedule changes, which it can. And then there's the other big suit, um, what I call the environmental suit for the ranch area. And those folks are in negotiations and I just can't see them doing anything but pressing hard to have, um, this is pure speculation. I will deny I speculated in a court of law and no one's seeing this anyway, I'm all just by myself in my office here, that they will achieve some goals here of moving the ranches toward getting out of the park. And if when that happens, we will let you know and maybe have another Tule Elk Town Hall. If there's any significant thing that happens, we'll invite you back and keep the community together. Because again, this is a way to work on this issue, larger issues and issues interpenetrating with similar issues across the country. I have one more question, if we, if you're still up for one. Um, you know, I was last, I w contributed or participated in the town hall for with uh, the California, uh, Coastal Commission, and they were again. They they've been putting pressure on them to come back with clean water. You know, the ranchers to come back with clean water analysis. Do you know what's going on with that? What the latest is? Because they just seem to be. I don't know. They say the same thing every year, and then what happens? <laughs> Nothing. Are you asking me or a Fleur? I'm sorry. I thought that was anybody who, anyone who has any information on that. Where are you hanging back on that one? No, I'm not. I am. Um, I actually don't know the latest. I know that um, I know that Jack and Lisa and many of our colleagues uh, attend coastal commission meetings and other other commission yeah. meetings that are pertinent to it. Um, in defense of animals um, and other organizations has joined with other organizations to conduct water testing, um, which, as you know, came back and was like very uh, like infected with like coliform, fecal coliform bacteria, eco like E. coli, all kinds of nasties. You really don't want to get in that water. Um, and then there was the the situation where a some wonderful hearted um, employee actually went out and put the a water sign there saying this water is not safe. And then it um, it suddenly disappeared the next day. I think there was a bit of a hoo-ha about that. So, um, but unfortunately I do not know where the Coastal Commission is on the latest. So um, if anyone else does know, I would I would also be interested to know. Yeah, they have <laughs> to give in a time a timeline for that to happen. Hmm. I actually don't know the latest either about the, the, the triple C. And it, there, it's funny, uh, I would admit they're not my, they're of value, but they usually don't stop things. They're not that aggressive a political body. So I'm more concerned with what the Park Service is going to do here. So I haven't put my attention on the triple C, except for the Farallones Islands issue, which I do know more about, but that's not your question. So yeah. all which is to say, I don't know. <laughs> okay, thanks.
we'll we'll look into it and um and we will we will get back to you and give you an update on that max um really okay. appreciate you, you. And if people have questions you're you're welcome to email me um at uh either through ida my ida email is jack g at idausa.org or through my own tree spirit project which is jack at tree spirit project.com and i'm happy to answer any and all questions and this will, the other question I had is this will be, this is being recorded and I think Indefensive Animals will share this out in the next few days, I think. And then people can view, either view this. If you want to sit through it again, you can just hit it on rewind two or three more times, or you can share it with people who, did, who missed it. Great. Well, thank you again so much, Jack and Fleur for uh, both of, we're all here representing, you know, IDA, of course, Jack represents the Tree Spirit Project too. And we just want to thank everyone who's taken this time out today to join us for this, our second uh, Thule Elk Town Hall. Who knows, maybe we'll have a third with another other round of news that we'll find out. I think, um, as Jack said, it'll be some time before they do count all of the submissions, um, but we will expect to get some results at some point. And we look forward to sharing all that with you. So thanks to everyone for joining. And I think we'll go ahead and sign, sign off and Jack will answer any other questions you have via email. Thank, thank you all you so much. Thank, thank you for joining everyone. Thanks, Jack. Thank thanks. You. Thank you, everyone. Look forward thank to connecting you. in person one day when the pandemic's yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.